Wow, quickly come over here and see what I found. This has to be one of the coolest bugs I've ever found and one of the shiniest here in the low felt. My name is Taylor McCurdy and I'm an instructor at Eco Training and I'm sure you've realized by now that I am obsessed with bugs. So I've been loving all the rain that we've been having and it's really brought about like a wealth of insect life and all sorts of other things. But here on this beautiful flower, which are everywhere at the moment, it's called a ruby gnidia, are the most colorful creatures I've ever seen in my life. And these are called shimmering shield bugs. I feel like the name says it itself, that it's gonna be brightly colored and sort of reflecting lots and lots and lots of light. So they like to sit here in the middle of the flowers as they start to feed. They have a very long mouth part, a long proboscis, which they'll pierce straight into the stem of whatever plant they might be sitting on. In the case of today, we have a ruby ganidia and we'll feed on the sap from that. They're really, really beautiful. And you're probably thinking, if you're anything like me, how on earth does this help camouflage these bugs? So it was thought that bright colors was normally used to find mates, right? To attract mates like we kind of see in birds. This normally would represent that it is poisonous. So we call that aposomatic coloration. We have bright contrasting colors. Maybe they have some kind of foul tasting um, toxin that they'll produce, or maybe they spray something, or perhaps they even could sting you. It's a kind of a warning color, but that's not really the case with the shield bugs. Although they are closely related to, to stink bugs, which can of course spray and release a foul smelling secretion as a defense mechanism, this beautiful coloration actually helps with camouflage. Let me explain structural coloration to you. It's used pretty much throughout the natural world, but with bugs and beetles, for an example, they basically have a multi-layer reflector, which makes up part of the cuticle, which is many, many layers that make up the, the exoskeleton or the back or the shell of this bug that we have sitting here, or the beetle. And on that little beetle or bug, it's a bug, there are these tiny little cone-like shapes, very, very small, they're microscopic. And with those different angles, the light actually reflects at different angles. So this is not a metallic coloration. This is actually something that we call iridescence. So it doesn't matter which angle you look at it, you're going to not see the same colors all the time. And those bright colors, those greens and yellows and golds actually help camouflage it in its surrounding. Books are a part of a guide's life. It's so important to have reference books with you in the vehicle, just in case you find something that you're not so sure of. And these are two insect books that I highly, highly recommend. This one, the Encyclopedia, is really epic if you want to learn a little bit more about behavior and just why things are the way they are. And then it's also super important to have a field guide. And this will give you a list of the different types of species uh, of insects that you can find out here in Southern Africa. Remember, these are wonderful videos. We talk about lots of different things all the time. So if you have enjoyed yourself, please remember to hit the like and subscribe button and we hope to see you soon.